Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Cross Swim. My name is Ben Glasgow, and I'm an owner here. And it is so fantastic to see everybody this morning. And uh, thank goodness the weather is is starting to come around. And uh, anyway, we're just so happy to have you, uh, all you folks here. Um, if you're watching at home, we want to welcome you into the service as well, and thank you all for, for joining. If you're a guest this morning, uh, a special uh, welcome to you. And out front in our foyer, we have a, a, a welcome center. We'd love for you to stop by there uh, and uh, get some information if you need anything to stop by that welcome center out front, if you don't mind. Uh, also, for, for you guests, uh, a couple quick things. We do have a kid's ministry. It's down this orange hallway in the back. Uh, if you'd like to take your kid there. Uh, and uh, during the during the service, and we can meet them at, at their level with Jesus and uh, teach them what they need to know and have a good Sunday back there in the back with our trained volunteers. Uh, you can check them in, and uh, we'll show them where their classrooms are if you'd like to take your children back there. Uh, also, if you're a mother and you have your child in here in the auditorium during the service and you'd like to tend to your child uh, and also be able to uh, stay uh, you know, linked into the service, Back here uh, to my right, we have what we call the mom room, and you can come uh, go back there and uh, spend some quality time with your little one during the service uh, if they need that attention. Uh, also, if any questions come up during the service or you would like to pray with somebody uh, after the service or you'd like to meet some of our staff, uh, we have what we call a starting point room. It's back here to my left, uh, your right in the auditorium. Uh, after the service, we'll have our staff back there to uh, answer any question that you may have uh, and pray with you or anything that you may uh, want to ask them, uh, we can do that uh, with you back there in the very back. Uh, if you would like to give this morning, we have three ways that you can give. If you look around the auditorium, you'll find some wooden boxes. Uh, you can tithe in those boxes, uh, or, the, or you can give online, or you can give on our app. So there's three ways to do that, and uh, uh, we would like for you to take advantage of that if you would like to give this morning and tithe. Uh, big announcement, uh, this coming Wednesday, uh, put this on your calendars, there will be no Crosswind Kids and there will be no Crosswind Student Ministry this Wednesday night, okay? So if you pull up here and drop your kiddo off, nobody's going to be here. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, make sure you put that on your calendar and they're probably not going to be happy either because they have so much fun while they're here, but uh, no, no uh, Crosswind Kids, no Student Ministry this Wednesday night. Um, also, uh, we have Easter Sunday coming up on April the 17th, and um, uh, kind of in correlation with that, uh, we're, we also have t-shirts that uh, we are selling, and you can get them on the app, and you can purchase a Life is Better with, uh, Life is, sorry, excuse me, I was about to go get that backwards, Life with Jesus is Better t-shirt, if you would like to have one of those, you can purchase one of those through the app. Uh, all the proceeds for those t-shirts goes towards our mission trip to Honduras. And uh, once again, you can feel free to wear that t-shirt on Easter Sunday. So uh, kind of killing several birds with one stone there. Uh, but if you would like a, uh, a t-shirt to, to wear on Easter Sunday, donate to the Honduras mission trip, you can do all of that uh, through the app by just purchase, purchasing a t-shirt. Uh, I believe that is it. We are so thankful that all of y'all are here. Let's stand up and worship together. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. 
Come all you sinners, come find his mercy. Come to the table, he will satisfy. This goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us. His one and only son to save us. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, and come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his one and only Son to save us and live The power of hell, the power of hell, forever defeated, now it is well. I'm walking in freedom, for God so loved, yes, God so loved the world. Somebody better praise God here. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. So thankful for the love of God this morning. Anybody else with me on that? God is so good. He's so good. Miracles when you move, such an easy thing for you to do. Your hand is moving right now. You are still showing up at the tomb of every Lazarus. Your voice is calling me out. Right now, I know you're able. And my Can do 
everything's possible by the power of the Holy Ghost. A new wind is blowing right now. Breaking my heart of stone, take it over like it's Jericho. Even if right now, Lord, in our own lives, it looks like we're losing, we recognize the truth. That you're the way, the truth, the life. Your victory, your healing, God, your freedom. So come and reveal yourself to us this morning. We're here to meet with you.
coming with the heart of the worship. I'm bringing in a brand new song. I'm ready to see the unthinkable. I'm ready for a miracle. Hearts praying for a fresh encounter. Souls looking to the living God. I'm ready for a real revival. Oh, Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Holy Spirit, fall in this place. Fill our hearts. Holy Spirit, come like a flood, like a fire. Come in this place today. We're on the edge of a new beginning. God, we know you have so much more. We're looking to a new horizon. We're praying for the rain to pour. An overflowing of true redemption. An overflowing of your kingdom. We're ready for a real revival. Oh, holy. Like a 
Oh, Holy Spirit, come. Oh, Holy Spirit, come. Have your way. What do you need today? this morning cry out to your father he's listening thankful to be called of God. There's a place for me. 
so thankful to be children of God. What a privilege. What an honor. What a joy to be called a child of the Most High. We don't want for anything because you're a good father. We don't lack because you're all sufficient. You walk us beside streams of living with water. Help us to follow you, God. Help us to live the way that you want us to live. Help us to love the way that you want us to love. Well, hey, everybody. It is so good to see all of you guys here in the room. I want to thank all of you for being a part of Crosswind Church today. Whether you're in the room, those of you watching online as well, we appreciate you guys uh, being here with us as well. But a special welcome uh, to those of you who are here, or again, virtually, uh, you're a guest. This is your very first time to Crosswind Church. Uh, welcome. My name is Garrett, and I'm one of the pastors here, and so delighted to be able to welcome all of you guys um, One of the things I want to do before we get started this morning is just a quick word of instruction. Uh, For the next 20 or 30 minutes, would all of you remind staying in your seat and not trying to slap me? Uh, That would be really, really, I would appreciate that very much. If you need to go to the restroom, you need to go to the mom room or whatever, that's wonderful. But I, I don't like conflict. Like... I mean, I, I, and again, I don't say that because, like, I'm a Christian or, like, a pastor uh, or really even, like, you know, I think I'm, you know, a good human being. But, like, I naturally, like, absolutely don't like conflict. Like, watching, like, all the videos that we were able to watch last week just kind of, like, made me cringe. And so, like, I think we need to understand, especially, like, for those of you um, who, who, who don't, me, don't know me real well, like, naturally cannot stand conflict. Like, it's just not, and again... Like, I was in one fight, and I can't even really say it was a fight in elementary school because a dude sucker punched me. I say a dude. A male child hit me, another male child, in the stomach without my knowledge. And after, you know, what seemed like a couple of hours of pain, finally got up, caught my breath, got some friends, and we, we beat him up pretty bad. But anyway, that was uh, before salvation, and so I just wanted to point that out. Not even really a fight. So, um, but naturally, I don't like... Uh, conflict. So much so that a couple years ago when I came on staff at Crosswind, uh, one of the things Jeremy asked me to do was fill out the Enneagram test. All right? And so for those of you who are familiar with the Enneagram test, uh, basically nine uh, profiles, is basically just a big personality test. It has nine different levels or nine different kinds of personality. And so you, you take what feels like is the ACT and the SAT put together. And once you finish all those questions, it, it computes and does the data thing. Anyway, it spits out what you are. And so I'm an Enneagram 9. For those of you who just wanted to know, uh, or nine, or, or the way that it's actually described is nines are labeled as peacemakers. In other words, we avoid conflict at all cost, right? So like after service, if you invited me to lunch and I actually made a decision in my indecisiveness and I said, you know what, I'm thinking Mexican. And you're like, mm, I was thinking Chinese. More than likely, we're going to Chinese, all right? It's just like, I'm just going to back up and just take my opinions and, and let whatever you decide because I don't really want conflict. I don't want to deal with it. It just kind of makes me nervous. The other thing that I learned about being um, a nine is that more than likely, in most situations, uh, nines are natural mediators, meaning if if there's some kind of conflict, if there's some kind of debate going on, most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, uh, nines try to stay in the middle. 
Again, we're going to avoid conflict at all costs. But like when we stay in the middle, what I mean by that, or the phrase that I use a lot of times, as many of you have probably heard this too, if you know someone like this, like we see as a not, like I see both sides of the coin. Right, like I see your argument, I see your argument. Now that doesn't mean I'll agree with you or I agree with you. It just means I see both sides, right? So it's really fun if I have a Democratic friend and a Republican friend, right? Like I see both sides, right? And most of the time you're both wrong, right? Like it's just one of those things. But like one of the things that I've noticed about um, being in the middle, especially now that I've been ousted as a former car salesman, um, one of the things I used to deal with all the time was like, do you do I buy new or do I buy used? And again. I, I could see pros and cons with both, right? Depending on what you want to do, depending on your situation. Like, it was just, I don't know, right? Do I buy Ford or do I buy Chevrolet, right? Do I, do I, do I buy Toyota or is it Hyundai or, or should I go electric? Like, I don't know. Like, whatever is best for you, right? That's, that's kind of the way I looked at it. Or, or mainly, if like, as long as you bought for me. That was really what I really wanted to say. But anyway, like, for some of us, it may not be that big of a purchase. It may be something smaller. Like, when you go to the grocery store, do you buy name brand or do you buy generic? Right? And I, I see both sides. I really do. Like, I see, like, if you want to buy the name brand because you've tried the generic brand and it just doesn't taste as good and you want the name brand, right? Like, all things Dr. Pepper, right? Like, buy Dr. Pepper. Don't buy anything else. Don't buy Mr. Pip or Dr. Pip or whatever kind of Pip they're trying. It's not the same as Dr. Pepper, right? But, like, for some people, you've tried the generic, you've tried the name brand, but you know what? Save a few dollars, a few pennies, go, go generic. It's fine, right? Or, or for some, it's, it's like a, it's that argument inside the house, right? It's not, nothing you can buy, but it's the argument inside the house. Like, and this may just be my house, but, like, like which way does the toilet paper hang? It's like, seriously, like, for those of you online, you can, you can comment right now. I'm not going to ask to pull the audience, but, like, like, does it hang over or behind, right? Like, and again, I kind of see both sides to that. Um, I, the way that I look at it is uh, beards are oftentimes better than mullets, right? Like, that's the way I look at it. Like, and some of you won't get that until you go and you sit down later, but um, that's kind of, like, the way I look at it is, like, that's, I think you should go over. Anyway, so if you've never had that argument, or you've never thought about having that argument, and you will have that argument later on today. Um, it, when it comes to the small things, whether it's purchases, whether it's things in the home, a lot of times there's going to be disagreements, and there's going to be decisions that have to be made, and there's going to be both sides or, or one side, and you've got to figure all that out. But when it comes to like small little things like that, we're, we expect that. But on a large scale, like we're probably united over the reason. Right, like we, we all can probably unite around the reason, like you need transportation. Like in order to get where you need to go, to come to church, go to your job, go on vacation, spring break, whatever it is, you probably need some kind of transportation. We can all get united behind that. We can all get united behind uh, buying yourself food and, and feeding yourself, not starving yourself, use it toilet paper and Dr. Pepper being the greatest drink in the world. Like we can all get united and behind those things, okay? And oftentimes when we think of unity, when we think of something being united, it's on a very large, grand scale, right? The very name of our nation is the United States of America. Now, again, we could spend all day, and news media does this all the time, whether or not we're united or not. But the point being, on a grand scale of things, more than likely, the states are united in the fact that that is our name. And what's amazing about that name, if you nerd out and with history like I do, like what's amazing about that name is that name was written into the Declaration of Independence long before it was, ever, it was ever even conceived in the principle of United States. It was mainly 13 colonies that ran themselves like a business. What was good for South Carolina wasn't good for Virginia, wasn't good for Massachusetts. And it wasn't until July 4th that everybody kind of rallied around this idea and this phrasing of United States of America. And when you look at a global scale today, you see that most of the world, I wouldn't say all the world, but I would say most of the world kind of unites behind this Ukrainian conflict. That there's this, there's this cause, there's this agenda that makes us kind of unite behind something on a grand scale of things. I even think about the grand scale of churches. I would say all Christians, for all churches, all Christian churches unite behind this idea of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. But within that, there's all different kinds of smaller debates and arguments and theologies and doctrines and denominations and all of these different things. And if you didn't know that, if you didn't know that, that unity is such a big deal, you should pick up a Bible. I brought a list of scripture because we can't read them. we got to just point to them. Right? Like, there is unity after unity throughout Scripture. They, 
we just don't have the time to read, but hey, maybe a good devotion, maybe a good Bible study. Look up a bunch of verses and scriptures. Matter of fact, the entire letter of 1 Corinthians is about the Apostle Paul addressing divisions because the church doesn't have unity. It is a big deal for Christians to be united behind and around the gospel of Jesus Christ. So much so that not only is it within our Bible, Jesus Christ himself, while on this earth, prayed for unity. Now, I've said this before, but I'm really big into these red letters. And so if you want to go to John chapter 17, it's where we're going to read from today. John 17, one of uh, Jesus' disciples records the longest recorded prayer of Christ. And what he prays for are three simple things, or really three things. Let me not say simple. Three things. Jesus prays for himself, he prays for his disciples, and he prays for you and me. And he prays for the other Christians around the world. He prays for the Christians who have come to know Christ from this point all the way back, in, back at the point of resurrection. And John records his prayer, and starting in verse 20, this is what Jesus says. This is what Jesus prays. My prayer is not for them alone, the disciples, is not for them alone, but also pray for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Think about this for a second. Jesus didn't think this. It wasn't a matter of praying this out on a distant uh, uh, mountaintop where he would isolate himself or he would get alone. No, no. He says this prayer in the midst of his disciples. The timeline of Jesus' life when we read this is right after the Last Supper. We're somewhere in between the Last Supper and, and before he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, if you're thinking time-wise. This is where we're at. And John records him praying not only for himself, not only for the disciples that are in the room, but also for the people that are to come, his followers. And when you fast forward 2,000 years, here we sit today. And so the way I read this is that he's praying for you and me. He's praying for the followers of Jesus who would dare step into faith, step into trust with him so that they may believe. Why would we believe? Why would we believe that God would love this planet, this humanity so much that the Son of God would step out of heaven, be born on earth, live a perfect life, die, be resurrected? Just because Jesus says, no, 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 I want them to be one. And then he says this, that, that, that I, I, I'm in you and you're in me. And we get, and we get this, this thing that we call, the, in the church we call the Trinity, right? And for those of you who might have grown outside the church or don't understand this term, the Trinity is where we believe that there is one God. Everybody say, one God. There is one God, but he, he has, is, is made up of three different persons, right? That's where we get the God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus prays this, that they, the disciples, they, the disciples to come and the followers of Jesus to come, they, sitting at Crosswind Church or listening to Crosswind Church online, today would be one the exact same way that you, Father, and I, the Son, exist in unity. I don't know about you, but that's some deep stuff. That's some difficult stuff. Because just like today, or just like in any, uh, maybe any kind of Sunday this year, or this past couple months in, in 2022, or maybe even 2021, and at speeches in, in local legislations and bodies of government and Congress and, and Parliament and, and in NATO and in the UN, there will be all kinds of talk and speeches of unity, which is easy to do, by the way. It's a little bit more difficult to live out. And so Jesus continues and he says, may they be one so that, everybody say so that, so that tells me in that prayer that eventually, whenever we get to this point of unity, when we get to this idea of oneness, there's going to be an, there's going to be an agenda. 
When, it, when we have unity, there's going to come an agenda and aspirations behind this unity. There's going to come a purpose. There's going to become of a plan. There's some kind of direction and determination whenever we get behind a goal, we get behind an idea, we get behind, let's just say, the gospel message. There's something that's going to happen because of it. And he says that they would believe that you, Father God, sent me. And he continues on, verse 22. He continues praying and he says, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. So uh, this past Friday night, uh, Steph and I got to go out on a date. Steph's my wife, by the way. I didn't want you to think I went out with a random woman named Steph. Um, so Steph and I got to go out on a date uh, Friday night, and, and by the time we got back home, it was dark. And so we're, we're, we're walking to the back door, and it's, it's partly glass. And so as we get to the steps, we can see into our living room. And uh, there on the couch, our three daughters have already changed into PJs. Right, and parents, don't you just love that? Like, they're already in PJs. Like, oh, so, less, one less thing to do. Like, so they're already in PJs, and they're just kind of playing around on the couch. Right, and, and Harper, our one-year-old, she's kind of learned how to get up on the couch, which is like, to her, it's like climbing Mount Everest. Like, it's just wonderful. So, like, she's climbing around, and they're just kind of playing. And we're just like, as we walk up to the door, like, it just kind of captures our attention. And we just kind of stop and observe the moment, right? And we're watching them play, and, and they're laughing, and they're having a good time. And Blake's got, Blakely's got, like, this little uh, cell phone, and she's, like, you know, pretending like to take a selfie, right? Because she's six, going on 16. And so, like, it's just this beautiful moment when we come home, and we see our children in complete unity, now, the reason we stop, for those of you who aren't parents or you don't understand this, the reason we stop and observe and we try not to disrupt this moment is because this doesn't happen all the time, <laughs> right? Whether you're a parent, you're a guardian, you're a teacher, like whatever, like if you're around kids, this doesn't happen. We need to stop right now and pray for the Crosswind Kids volunteers because there's probably not unity over there, <laughs> right? Like it's probably terrible, um, but we stopped and we just observed this beautiful moment because our children are just having a good time. And instead of fighting and bickering and complaining and taking one iPad away from the other iPad or one crayon away from the other crayon or that one coloring book that they wanted because they had princess in there and they wanted the princess and the other ones don't have a print like just a little snip into my household like it's it's nuts y'all we stopped and just watched them it's, i mean it seemed like 30 minutes it was only a couple minutes we just like kind of watched them watch them play and laugh and cut up that's what god wants to see What would it be like this week if we caught God's attention long enough to where he stopped and just observed us as his followers and said, oh, unity. Right? Yeah, they disagree over some things. And yeah, not everybody votes the same and lives the same and all this kind of stuff. But man, look at this. Y'all, hey, angels, come and check this out. And it catches God off guard so much, though, that he just watches and observes our unity. Jesus wants and prays, as we see right here, for complete unity. And as parents, we kind of understand this when, we, when, it, when it just catches us off guard. And the kids are out playing together. Or they're doing something together and there is no strife, there is no conflict. There's no, it's just this beautiful representation of what complete unity could look like. And for those of us Christians, especially those of us who are followers of Jesus, this is something to strive towards. This is something difficult, right? This, again, we can talk about it all day long. We can make a series out of it. Like, we can do all this kind of stuff. But to live it out, whew, what would that look like? Better, let, me, let me rephrase it this way. What would it, what would it be like to be the answer to Jesus' prayer? 
what would it look like for those of us who are Christians, who are followers of Jesus, to literally just decide to step up and say, you know what, I want to be the answer to that prayer. If Jesus prayed for it, it's got to be important. If Jesus took time amongst his disciples to not only just think about it, to not only to instruct about it, but to literally pray for it, I think it's important. And so what would it look like for us to just be like, you know what, I want to be the answer to that prayer. I want to try to figure out what that looks like, how I can step toward unity amongst all believers behind the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I brought you three ways I think we can do it. You don't have to do all three, but if you want to, go you. Go you. Uh, but one of three would be really, really great. The first one I think we could do is do what Jesus did and pray. I think many times in churches we underestimate the value of prayer, and we oftentimes think of it as a list of things that we need. Where in reality, if we do that, that's, that's one part of prayer. But if we look at it from unity, I think we all need unity. And I think the church needs unity. I think the world needs unity that's brought about through the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So what would it look like to begin to pray for unity like Christ did? Because i got to be honest, I really don't know if I've ever done that. If I did do it, I've forgotten about it, which means I probably didn't mean it when I did it, right? Like, it's just one of those things, like, mm, I just did it in passing. But what would it look like to create into our natural rhythm, everyday routine of prayer, praying for unity? If you've never done it, let me encourage you. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, this massive, like, super organic, you know, big word kind of prayer. Like, I just kind of brought you an example um, so that you kind of know how you could pray like this. Heavenly Father, make us one so that we can influence the world. Again, so that, meaning there's an agenda, and there's aspirations, there's direction, there's a plan, there's a purpose behind doing this thing, behind praying this way, there's an agenda. There's a reason we're doing that. So that the world may know that we believe in Jesus and that God sent him, and that's why God loves us so, so much. This is a sample way of how we could pray for unity. Again, you can do it daily. You can do it during, throughout the week. You can do it when you turn on the news and you see all the bad things the news is talking about, right? Pray this prayer just like that, real simple. Now, in your prayer, if you decide to do this and you want to take it up to the next step, let me, let me, um, let, let's go to the second way how we can answer this prayer. I think we could give. Notice how you say give and the room just gets really tense, right? Everybody just kind of like clenches on their wallet just a little bit, right? So here's the thing I know about Crossman Church. Crossman Church is a super, super generous church, right? And so one of the ways that uh, we've talked about as a staff, like what does it look like um, to support, just on a global stage, what does it look like to support Ukraine? Matter of fact, what does it look like to support Ukraine from a Christian perspective, right? And look, prayer is welcome. Prayer is necessary. Prayer is over, over, over uh, compensated. We need to pray, yes. But if you're like me, more than likely, you kind of felt this need, whether it was deep down, whether it was something you believed the Holy Spirit was leading you, regard, like there was just this, you needed to do something, and you wanted to do something, and like we said earlier, most of the world is kind of gathered and united around this, sympathized with this conflict, and so... One of the questions that came up a few weeks ago in staff meeting was like, we want to give, we want to, as a family or, or as you know, individual, like we want to give, we want to help, but how do you do that? And so what we decided to do as a staff is like go through some organizations, mind you, Christian organizations that we could vet and we could kind of go through the process and we, we could say, um, hey, if you wanted to pray for unity, that's so, so great. And we should probably all do that. But if you felt the need to do something extra, if you felt the, the need to do something a little more, a little bit more tangible, a little bit, something a little bit more real, um, you could give. And so on the Crossman Church app, we've made a button for you, for those of you who have the app, for those of you who don't um, have the app, uh, get saved and then go download the app. And when you download the app, um, you'll see a Help Ukraine, Ukraine Donations button. When you click on that, there are three uh, links at the top. These are Christian organizations. Now, again, let me stress this. I'm all for nonprofits and charities that are not of a Christian making, that are providing humanitarian aid and all this kind of stuff. Those things are wonderful. 
But again, being united behind the message in the gospel of Jesus is not just giving water, it's not just sheltering refugees, it's not just providing clothes and food and all those things. It's doing those things in the name and in the love of Christ. And so from that, we've figured out a couple of organizations that if you wanted to, right, because again, the news organizations and all these folks, they're telling you and that you can give here, there, and everywhere, like, and those things are wonderful, and some people have already done that. This is, again, fine. But for those who wanted to give behind this banner of unity, behind this idea of we want to be united in our efforts toward Christian organizations that help out these, folk, these folks or, who are displaced, there, there's three different links right there. Solid Rock, Send Relief, Love Does. You can click the links, you can read about them, all that kind of stuff. There's a fourth link at the bottom of this button that I wanted to tell you about real quickly because oftentimes, or in a few conversations that I've had, sometimes we're skeptical about sending money uh, somewhere or or far off. And In today's world with so much technology, that may not be a big deal. But um, for some people, they want to see their money locally and they want to figure out how to give locally so that they can affect something far off. And that's fine and wonderful too. And so about a week, week and a half ago, we, we heard of um, some money that was being collected through the Unicity uh, Rotary Club. And so what's cool about that, for those of you who are kind of like, oh, I don't want to just send my money overseas, you wanted to give to something local. We have a Unicity Rotary Club button there that gives you a link to give directly um, through the church, but through uh, the church to the Rotary Club. Because what's going to happen with the Rotary Club is all the money that's been collected uh, through there, uh, we have a gentleman in uh, the county who's going to double it. And so for those of you who much rather would give more local uh, and, and have a, a, an extra effect, there's a link there for the Rotary uh, Club. Now, let me say this, because again, Crossman Church is a super generous church. There is no pressure from this stage, our staff, our elders, anybody to give money at any time. It's just not. What we do want to provide for you is an opportunity that if you feel the need to give, if you feel the need to go over and above, if you're praying for unity this week and you just kind of feel like you should do something, here's some options that are available to you. Yes, you can Google all different kinds of things that people are doing around the world to combat all kinds of things, and you could give to those things, yes. But in a moment where we just say, you know what, unity is probably important. Maybe we should do a little something more than just pray about it. Again, not trying to take advantage or, or, or talk down upon prayer because, again, it is overlooked and sometimes undervalued. But for those of us who are willing and able, who may want to give a little more, here's some options for you. Because again, here's what I know about Crossman Church. (laughs) You got payments, right? Like, you've got to buy groceries. You got to buy Dr. Pepper. Like, you got to do these things, right? Like, there are other things you have to do. Your kids are going to camp. Your students are going to beach camp. Literally, there are a lot of other things going on. And so again, I get all that. And so, no pressure. But again, if you wanted an avenue to where you could give directly to Christian organizations or you wanted to give locally to an organization that's going to try to have a maximum impact as far as here locally, those are some options for you. So you can pray, so you can give, and then probably, probably the one that's going to hit us all um, as we leave today or as we go to work tomorrow or school, not school, whenever you go back to school, like, it's just look, Right? Like oftentimes, we get stirred up here in the church building, and we get inspired in the church building, and that's great, and that's wonderful. And somewhere between here and the parking lot, or the parking lot and the restaurant, or the parking lot and the nap that you're going to take later, it's just poof, right? And again, I'm just as guilty as the next, but I wonder if we, under this idea that if Jesus prayed for unity, it's probably important. I just wonder if we should have a different outlook on life tomorrow. Or as we go out to the restaurants or go out to wherever it is that we're going to look out. Because there's all kinds of opportunities for unity. And so my challenge for all of us, again, whether you're a Christian, you're not a Christian, you just want to be a good person. Like, what? Like I don't really care. Like, look for opportunities this week to be united. And for those of you who are Christians especially, be united behind the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's one thing to be a good human. It's a whole other thing to be a Christian and a follower of Jesus. Why do we do these things? Why do we follow Jesus? Why do we act like Jesus, serve like Jesus? Because he did it first. And he's the example. And so what would it look like this week as we're praying about unity, as we're thinking about giving, what would it look like to look, to strategically look for those opportunities this week at our jobs to be more unified? 
to encourage our children as they go to school or as they go to school next week or whenever your kids go to school? Like, what would it look like to talk to our children about unity and what that should look like? Parents leading the way to unity. What would that look like as we go about our week to just absolutely have a strategic mindset? You know what? As I go about today, as I go to work tomorrow, as I've got to go to Walmart and buy a name brand, Dr. Pepper, right? Like as, I, as I go, can I be more unified in the way that I talk, in the way that I act, the way that I serve, and probably most importantly in the way that I love? What would that look like this week to be the answer to Jesus' prayer? May we all be one, the same way that the Son is one with the Father and the Father is one with the Son. What would that look like to be unified across the board in everything we do? I think it would change our worlds. I think it would change your jobs. I think it would change our school systems and in the places that we go. What would it look like? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Thank you so much that you loved humanity so, so much that you came to this earth, died, but was resurrected for us. Father, I thank you for the unity that you display, for the unity that you engage in with the Son and with the Spirit and and how you set an example for all of us who are followers of Jesus to be unified amongst one another. God, I pray for Crosswind Church. I pray for the Christians in our area, for the other churches in the area, for the organizations that are doing work under the gospel message that we would be unified in every and all effort to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ so that our community, our coworkers, our friends, our families, those that we would come in contact with would believe and would know and would understand that you love us so, so very much. God, you are for us. You are not against us. God, use us in every avenue that we go this week, whether it be the business world, education, whether it's just out and about. God, use us as your vessels. Use us as your representatives to truly be united behind the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you for all the things that you're doing in and through Crosswind Church on every every level. God, would you continue to make your name famous through us? Help us show our community, our family, our friends, that we truly believe that life is so much better with you. In Jesus' name, I pray, and everybody at Crosswind Church said, Amen. Amen. You guys have a great week.